Sharpening a plane blade is somewhat similar to sharpening a chisel. We're going to get the back flat and polished and we're going to hone the bevel. The difference is with a chisel, we use the hollow grind to establish the angle when we're honing. With a plane blade, we're going to use a honing guide and we're going to grind at a shallow angle and hone at a steeper angle. Uh, the other advantage of using a honing guide is that that will allow us to rock the blade back and forth while maintaining that bevel angle and put a, a curve or a crown on the edge of the blade. So let's take a look at how that works. So we take the lever cap off first and then I'm going to carefully pull the blade out. And I'll remove the uh, chip raker. <clears throat> so when removing it, we loosen the screw, pull the chip breaker back. I'm going to turn it and then slide it so the uh, screw comes out of the hole there. The first thing I need to do is get the the face flat. Now this this uh, plane blade has been sharpened before. I've used had this for quite a while. Uh, so I'm just going to show the uh, the motion here. I'm actually going to start or put my 8,000 grit stone on here. But let's pretend for now this is 4,000 grit. I'm sorry, 1,000 grit. So you're going to start like a chisel. We need to get this surface flat. I like to put a lot of pressure right at the tip here. So I'm going to put my my fingers from one hand like that and my other hand like that and I'm going to work the face of the blade. So I'll, I'll come you know maybe off the stone a little bit on this side and then I'll work back on you know to with whatever come three quarters of an inch or so back and forth. So I would do this like I said, I'd start on a thousand grit stone and and work this surface until uh, we've got a nice consistent color, just like with a chisel, um, at the tip. Now, with a plane blade, because the uh, chip breaker you know covers everything except the last little bit of blade, we're not really too concerned about getting this area back here. I mean, it's nice nice to have it flat, but don't get too hung up about it. If, if you just get the last quarter or even eighth inch nice and polished, you're going to be fine. So so just like with a chisel, I would go start with a thousand, go to four thousand, then eight, uh, yeah, one thousand, four thousand, eight thousand, get your polish, and then next we will uh, hollow grind. Like a chisel, we're going to hollow grind this. Going back, you know, back and forth here, out past the sides a bit. Of course, the this particular blade is two inches the same as the wheel, so you have to uh, come off the wheel a little bit. So I'm just going to keep grinding until the whole surface is hollow ground. Uh, and I'm grinding at about a 25 degree angle, no more than 25, about 23 to 25 degrees works great. Knock the water off of there. Okay, now I do want to want to check for square here. Uh, yeah, this is grinding a little crooked, so it's it's high on this uh, right side. So I'm going to turn the blade like that, get that edge closer to the wheel, which should grind it a little more.
Okay, so it looks like I went a little too far. Oh no, I haven't gone far enough. Now one thing that's helpful, and this is true on a chisel too, is to uh, take a Sharpie and uh, get that surface all black or blue essentially and that will make it easier to see what's going on. Here. So I'm just going to rub that just briefly and we'll see. So it's it's taking that whole surface off but yeah this side is still high so I need to turn it a little bit more. Now it doesn't have to be perfectly square because the uh, you know, lateral adjuster on the plane can be used to square up the blade in the in the plane. So that's looking pretty good. The, the area that I'm grinding on this side it looks pretty square. I just need to continue grinding till I get all the way to this uh, edge here. Okay, that's still not quite there, but everything's looking nice and square, so I'll just continue a little bit longer. Okay, so that looks great. The whole surface is ground. I can check. nice and straight and flat, so we're ready to start honing. I'm going to use a side clamp honing guide. This is the Eclipse guide. It's got a fairly uh, narrow wheel on it <clears throat> and clamps the blade on the side and the amount that the uh, blade sticks out determines the uh, honing angle. <clears throat> and it, it gives you some uh, some projection uh, numbers here for uh, various angles. I'm going to use the uh, Lee Nielsen honing guide. Works s somewhat similarly. And I have a jig here that that uh, a wet jig that will tell me the correct angle. So for 32 degrees, that's the amount of uh, projection I need there. <clears throat> we'll put a little water on there. So this is my 1,000 grit water stone. Now, I want to start by just establishing a flat bevel. And by flat, I mean flat. You know, flat across this way will eventually start to curve it. So I'm just, I've got my thumbs at the back here, I've got my fingers on either side. I see a full, full width contact there. So I'm just going to do that until I get a uh, just a narrow band there and that looks to me like my my honing bevel is uh, is a, about a 64th of an inch wide so what I want to do next let's rinse that off so I can see a little better so what I want to do now is put pressure on one side because I want to start putting a curve on here so I need to take material off of uh, this side of the blade. So I'm going to put my finger 
half half off, not not over here, not over here, just half off on both sides. I'm going to put pressure on this side. I'm going to start on this right side. And the blade's almost going to lift up a little bit. And we should see, we rinse that a little bit, should see uh, a noticeable line on that uh, right side. So I'm going to go one, two, three. Uh, now because this uh, amount of material I'm removing is pretty small right now because that honing bevel is so so small. Um, I think three passes up and back is going to be fine. Uh, I'll do the same thing on the left side. And if I look at that, <clears throat> yeah, I can I can see a, a difference. It's definitely a little wider and then narrow and then uh, wider there. Now, the amount of passes that you take is going to vary uh, depending on multiple factors. Uh, the, the stone that you're using, you know, different stones have different characteristics. Uh, the particular blade that you're using, the, uh, you know, a harder A2 steel blade is going to be more difficult to uh, remove material than, than this blade. This is a, high, a uh, 001 blade. Uh, the width of the of the bevel that you're working, you know, as, as you do multiple sharpenings, that honing bevel is going to get wider. So that will take more passes. So you just need to get a sense of how all these things work together and what the particular circumstances are that you're dealing with. So for this situation, I think I'm good. I'm going to switch to my next uh, grit. Uh, let me just flatten that real quick. <clears throat> So I'm going to go to my th uh, 4,000 grit stone next. Now, because this has a little bit of a crown on it now, or at least I've removed material on the on the edges, I should see that, yeah, it's only hitting in the middle. I'm not seeing it hitting on the edges now. So that's exactly what I was expecting. So I'm going to hone the middle. Now I'm going to go to the right side over here. You can see now I'm getting a dark line over there. I'm going to gradually switch to now I'm pushing on the left side. So as I'm going back and forth, I'm gradually kind of moving the pressure from one side to the other. And that should give me a nice, smooth crown. All right. And then we'll switch to 8,000. Okay, once again, yes, I see uh, it's hitting just in the middle and, and it kind of feathers off on either side, just what I would expect. Be pushing on the right side now. Now I'm back to the middle and I'm pressure on the left side. All right, and now I'm just gonna kind of, as I'm going back and forth, I'm gonna switch the pressure right and left. I'm gonna, not push quite as hard. Okay, so I'm sure that's good. Um, now I'll turn it over, you know, because as we're honing, it tends to push some metal off the edge. I'll turn it over while it's still on the honing guide. Trying to put pressure right, right at the tip there. And then couple of light passes back and forth here. Okay, I think that's going to work. Work well. Got a nice polished edge there. Polished right at the uh, edge on that surface. So we'll 
put that back in the plane, see how it works. Okay, I've dried the blade off and I'm going to put a little, just a little camellia oil on here. Okay, so to put the chip breaker back on, it's the, of course, the reverse of taking it off. So I'm going to put it on at 90 degrees like that, bring it back, and then turn it into position. And then I'll move it forward. I want to be no more than a 30 second or so from the edge. Yeah, different people have different opinions on that. When I tighten this, th this one's pretty good, but sometimes when you tighten this, it uh, it moves the chip breaker a little bit. Uh, this one stays put pretty well. Now, if I wanted to uh, move this back and forth, I can tap that to kind of find fine-tune that distance. Okay, I'll make sure that's snug. Okay, that looks good. Uh, make sure that the, the bed is clean. Put that in place. I've made sure the lever cap is engaged. I'm sorry, the uh, lateral adjusting lever is engaged. And put the, I always pull the blade back before I tighten that up. And uh, we'll adjust this and uh, make a shaving. So it looks, just eyeballing it, it looks like we're pretty good. So this board is, is pretty flat, so this will tell us right away how the how the blade is adjusted and set up. So let's see here. So that looks pretty good. That's a nice wide shaving. It uh, feathers off on either side. Might might be a little bit too wide. I'm going to back off. Yeah, I can feel a little bit of a, a, a plane track there. So I'm going to back that off just a touch. That was too much. So as I'm moving forward here, I'm going to adjust the depth of cut. We're a little heavy. Okay, so that's looking good. We've got a, a nice amount of crown there. If anything, maybe a little bit too, too little crown, but that's looking pretty good. That's what we're looking for. Nice. Okay, so that's that's sharpening a, a plane blade with a crown on. Of course, if I was doing a, a shooting plane or shoulder plane or rabbit plane, I would not put the crown on it. Just just a straight uh, straight bevel all the way across.